بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. Once again, welcome to Ramadan Diaries, and today we'll be looking at a very uh, special topic which has to do with Ramadan and issues that affect us in the month of Ramadan. Uh, today's is going to be our second episode for this year's Ramadan Diaries, and I would be speaking to Sheikh Abdul Mohsin Shamoun Bafi, Islamic scholar and director of Leading Edge Academy here in Kumasi. We'll be looking at issues that has to do with uh, Muslims in the month of Ramadan, what you are supposed to do and what you are supposed to stay away from. And also we'll be looking at why we keep on having a bit of confusion on the sighting of the moon, especially this year, for instance, we had uh, issues of whether the moon was sighted somewhere or not. So these are some of the issues that we'll be looking and I hope uh, at the end of this particular episode you would get to know better about the month of Ramadan. Uh, so briefly, Sheikh uh, Abdul Mohsin, uh, tell us exactly who you are, what you do, and uh, I mean, briefly on that. Yeah, my name is Abdul Mohsin Shamoun Bafi. Actually, I'm an Islamic scholar. I had my Islamic studies in Saudi Arabia, then came back to Ghana. I also manage an IT company in Edum in the name of Al Qasim Company Limited. We deal in computer accessories and a lot. I also have a school in the name of Leading Edge Academy where we try to combine both the uh, English curriculum and the Arabic curriculum. Briefly, that's what I do. I'm also a, an imam at various mosques, and uh, I give lectures, I give a lot of thoughts. That's what I do. So, uh, what is it all about Ramadan? Actually, when we say Ramadan, it's uh, basically abstinence from food, drinking, and uh, sexual desire. Basically, from dawn till sunset. That's basically what we mean by Ramadan fasting or Ramadan. Yeah, it's done in this great of month of Ramadan. And during, during this uh, festive month, we also organize uh, a lot of prayers, night prayers, midnight prayers. We also try to advise the community, open their thought to charity and a lot of good deeds during this great month. So uh, why is it that Muslims uh, continue to cause national stir about the sighting of the moon? Can't we have a common ground where we can all agree that uh, we're going to start the Ramadan or the fasting today? Actually, it all has to do with the basic thoughts of the Islamic knowledge and understanding towards the teachings of the Islam. For instance, to some of the scholars, the Prophet said, fast when you see the moon. So to them, wherever the moon is being sighted, to them they should fast. Being in Togo, being in Saudi Arabia, being in Canada, wherever it has to, then to them you should fast. And to some too, considering where the prophet lived, it's not possible for him during at that time to get information from countries like Egypt and Co to fast. So meaning what the prophet was uh, using was just villages and towns around where he used to station at Medina. So to some of the scholars, we, every country should stick to its moon sighting and not the other country. So for instance, if I'm opinion of using Ghana's site and the neighboring countries around us, somebody else too may be uh, supporting Saudi plus Ghana and other countries. That's where the conflict starts. And you know, with like countries like Saudi Arabia, for instance, they have uh, an authority which when it decides, nobody can go contrary to the scene of that authority. Mm -hmm. But in Ghana here, it's freedom of opinion, freedom of speech. Everybody can do, everybody can alter whatever he or she thinks. Although we have the National Hilal Committee, which should have been that whatever they bring, everybody should respect mm -hmm. and submit to. But everybody has his own opinion and understanding to the text of the Quran and the Hadith. So that's what usually brings the uh, disagreements and those uh, thought of courses and a lot of 
discrepancies within the scholars and the community. But it appears that we have uh, never had a common ground on, on, on when to start the Ramadan over the years. I mean, I could remember that when we were kids, same thing happened. Uh, we were fortunate, I was fortunate that I came from a village so we could look around and check on the moon. But it appears over the years we have not come to a common ground on when to start the Ramadan. Either people will start two days before or a day before. And all of this bring confusion on when to pray the Eid al-Fitr and all that. Uh, what do you think needs to be done at this particular moment so that next year we wouldn't be experiencing such uh, a national stay? I think uh, to avoid all these problems, we need to restructure the Hilal Committee, which was established some years ago, which combines almost all the uh, divisions in the Islamic religion. We need to reform those uh, uh, communities again, the uh, Hilal Committee or the Council. There should be a reform whereby all those various parts and sects of Islam and the community, everybody should engage. Then from there, when we decide on a single opinion, I think from then people will agree to follow. But it's like to them, some of them, they think that some people sat somewhere to decide for them. So no matter how, they will never agree or support this idea. But should they also be brought forth to join this uh, decision, discussion, the person will also vomit whatever he has as an opinion. Then we deliberate on it and agree on a common decision which may end up benefiting all of us. But should it be like, oh, when the committee was formed, some people were not invited to join, mm. then meaning they will never take anything from this community, mm. uh, from this uh, 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 Hilal committee. Mm. That's the main uh, problem which is causing the division. To um, but uh, uh, people always say that, uh, I mean, for, for instance, let's use this year for instance, when we heard that the moon was sighted somewhere, uh, another group of people came to say that they have contacted families and friends over there and they said, no, the moon was not sighted there. And uh, it became a very a big issue on social media. We heard people uh, sending messages across the social media platforms. And, and then on Facebook too, we saw people arguing, young scholars with their imam arguing on Facebook on, on whether they have sighted the moon or not. I mean, in a particular town where people claim that their families and friends said nothing of such happened, and another group are saying that the moon was sighted there. Uh, why should we come to that level as Muslims? You know, usually what uh, should have been done is uh, we should just go back to the teachings of the Prophet wasallam. The Prophet was there when a man came telling him that he has sighted the moon. The Prophet asked him, do you believe in Allah? He said, yes. Do you believe I'm a prophet of Allah? He said, yes. Then the Prophet ordered the community to start fa uh, fasting. But there was nothing like we confirming whether it's true or not. So should the person be a liar, then he will receive the punishment at the judgment day because for lying, uh, we don't have that uh, capacity to go to an extent of uh, going to search whether it's true or not. And you know, what usually happened is, uh, happens is, uh, for instance, should I cite the moon? Other, my opponents will go to my uh, other opponents or enemies to go and be asking them, and no matter how they will con condemn. Why should I, let's say, for instance, cite the moon? In case of any confirmation, I should be called. Mm. Then they will call somebody else who wasn't at the time where I was to cite the moon. Then the person will just debunk my uh, citing, mm -hmm. my statement, as if uh, those are part of the issues that is causing the disagreement and those challenges within the community. But we should stick to the basic principle of the Prophet Sallam. Is the person who is citing a Muslim, once you believe it's a Muslim, then everything cast, cast down. Mm. Uh, and so now my next question has to do with the fact that uh, we have the date of Ramadan keeps changing. Maybe next for, uh, would have it maybe in March. Sometimes we have it in May, sometimes we have it. I mean, the month keeps changing. And uh, people would want to know why do we keep having such change in dates or month. I mean, basically, they want to understand how that happens. Uh, and and 
Islamically, what can you say about that? The month of Ramadan can never be stable because usually we Muslims, we base upon the sighting of the crescent moon uh, to identify it or to agree on a date. Usually it's been checked on the 29th whether it's appeared. Once it's appeared, then the next day will count a different date for the next month. Once it doesn't, then that very month will be completed 30th. Then the next day after the 30th will be the first day of that month. Meaning, it's either we see the moon or we don't. So you cannot give it a fixed date as Christians and other community do. Okay. No. Uh, okay. So let's look at uh, fasting, the suhu itself. Why should I wake up at dawn? To eat and can't I eat in the night and I'll sleep the next day then I'll begin with my fasting why suhoor in itself suhoor or eating at the dawn is one of the mercies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which he has uh, uh, favored us with considering you've ate around seven o'clock at night then you are to continue fasting with this uh, food that you eat, meaning you are going to spend about uh, 15, 17 hours without food. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with his favors, he favored us with this suhoor to at least to ease the hunger and the test which we may be going through during the daytime. That's the main purpose uh, uh, for which it was set for. And uh, considering it's like, uh, for instance, a person eating at the dawn and a person who doesn't eat, depending on the level of the strength, no matter how the one who eats, that's why it's been preferred for you to even eat at the latter part of the time, around 4.30, 4.20 something, so that at least you can get a lot of energy to fast the whole day. Basically, that's why and the purpose of that suhoor that we have been observing. The issue of, uh, what do you call it, the issue of the suhoor you've mentioned, uh, you talked about the time that you would have to spend the whole day to fast and maybe uh, you don't need it to, if you don't take or uh, go for the suhoor, you, you, it, will, it might affect you. Uh, but someone would say that some countries spend more than, more hours, like 20, uh, 21 hours, 16 hours, 9 hours fasting. Uh, are they different from Ghanaians? Well, that's, uh, they are not different from us, but it's based upon the moon or the lunar, what comes before you, because we are supposed to fast from dawn till sunset. So should it be uh, 12 hours, 13 hours, 17 hours, that's how it's supposed to be observed. And this is part of the issue. For instance, somebody in Ghana may decide, because this whole is not compulsory, may decide not to even uh, wake up for the suhoor, and he can easily fast. Then, considering somebody living in, uh, like, Le Luxembourg, who may be even fasting about 17 hours, considering the suffering and the length of the time and the test the person will be going through, meaning should that person had, uh, get the suhoor, it really boosts his uh, immune system to sustain him for this fast. And so you said the suhoor isn't compulsory? No, it isn't compulsory. But the prophet encouraged us to do our best to observe it. Uh, do we, if you, what do you get from it when you observe it? You will be rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the eating and you gain other strength to be able to fast the day. And also sometimes to, you know, whenever a person goes uh, hunger or thirsty, the level of uh, 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 hunger within him boosts up. But at least in the morning, should you get something little to eat, it reduces that temper down until maybe during the day or at the end, uh, uh, just before the sunset, mm -hmm. maybe the energy will go down and you realize the temper has gone up. And with some people today, they can't even fast without that suhoor. All right. Huh. So who should keep the fast? Who is qualified to fast? To fast? Actually, the fast is meant for Muslims, meaning non-Muslims are exceptionals. They don't fast. And also that Muslim too should be somebody who, has, who is above the age of adolescence, meaning from 14 going. And also that person too should be somebody with 
correct mind and not a mad man. Somebody whose mind sounds well and not a mad person. Because that person has lost their mind and can never know uh, 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 worship will be accepted from him. So the person should be a Muslim, either female or male, should be at the age of adolescence and should also be in his mind, mind a fully sounded mind person. Mm. Basically, this is the person and also has the capacity to observe the month. Like uh, an, uh, a, sick a sick person cannot observe this month. A person traveling, when he thinks observing it would be difficult for him because during the olden days, they used to travel on camels within this uh, mm. hot sand and a lot. Mm. So they are also being forgiven to fast in another day so after the month. So it doesn't necessarily mean that you would have to, uh, you don't have to fast when you are traveling. It doesn't necessarily mean. Yeah, it doesn't necessarily mean you don't have to fast because uh, once you think you can, and now it is, I think traveling is very easy as compared to those uh, olden days mm. where they have to be on camel for months for a lot of uh, stress. But now we can just take a flight maybe to Accra within the next 30 minutes you are there. With bus within the, four, uh, the next four hours you are there. So basically it's for those who think doing it will affect their health, yeah. then they can abstain. So how do I help a poor person in the month of Ramadan? Do we have a kind of a particular kind of help that we give out to poor people in the month of Ramadan? Actually, with help, helping the needy, it doesn't necessarily have to be within the month of Ramadan, but it's expected to be more within the month of Ramadan, like helping him to get his suhoor, meaning what he or she will eat at the dawn, and also while he or she break his fast, mm. to the person who needs something to also eat, because the person has been dried, from uh, dawn to till sunset, meaning no matter how, the person will need something. That's why you can see just before the sunset, you realize a lot of Muslims will be sending food, vegetables, food to the various mosques just to support these needy people. And also it's not necessarily being food, it can be cash mm. or anything that you think will fit for that particular person. Mm. So apart from the food and all those food you talked about, uh, we're looking at something like a cat. Do we, do we have such thing in, in the month of Ramadan? Zakat is not actually uh, designated to the month of Ramadan. Zakat starts per the date you started your work. So meaning, should I started working uh, in January, meaning by the next January, December, I should uh, give out my Zakat. But most Muslims prefer to do it in the month of Ramadan. Mm -hmm. So they try to either delay it or pay it earlier within the month of Ramadan just to put smiles on the other uh, needy people. Mm. And that's basically what caused them to uh, give those zakat within that uh, cherished month. Mm -hmm. So how does any Muslim in Ghana or across the world earn respect from their fellow Muslims during the month of Ramadan? We do know what happened in Ramadan, our relationship with others. How do I earn respect from my fellow Muslims? The easiest way is charity. The easiest way, no matter how, no matter how the person is, he may be in need of something. You just look at the person, whatever you think the person may need it, try package it well and give it to that very person. And inshallah, that one will help develop the relation between you and him. For instance, should I know that, oh, this neighbor of mine, I offended him during, let's say, before Ramadan. And I know the guy is very poor. So me gathering my zakat, and giving it to this man can increase and boost the level of our relationship too, which will help it to other well between us two. Mm. So uh, finally, uh, what do we need to stay from during the month of Ramadan? You spoke about food, uh, drinks. Yeah, sexual uh, Yes, uh, and, and, and what else do we need to stay and from Ramadan? Bodies and all by this being stealing, being it even looking at women, being it uh, 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 insults, a lot. Every, each and every bad deed should be avoided in, within this uh, great month of Ramadan. Mm. Okay, uh, your final words. Finally, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for bringing us to this great month 
indeed it's a very great blessing to see ourselves fasting Ramadan again because last year or some years back we were together with some people and this year they are no more so we thank Allah for this blessing and also I want to use this opportunity to advise our uh, leadership to also do well come to common times to at least support this poor community to unite its word to bring it together as a one community and one body not neglecting the other and favoring the other the other part for the other to feel offended so that the other will always go contrary to their decision i think it's time they do their best to adjust those issues so that at least we can live as a common people in one country in one community and in one religion all right That was Sheikh Abdul Mohsin Shiamun Bafi, Islamic scholar and director of Leading Edge Academy here in Kumasi. He spoke about the month of Ramadan issues that we need to stay away from and the sighting of the moon. He actually uh, deliberated on how we should come together as one people to be able to uh, know when to fast in every Ramadan. Uh, this is our second episode for this year's Ramadan Diaries. We we'll come again next week with another episode, which would we'll also talk about the same month, but on different issue. Thanks so much for watching. My name is Mahmoud Mohammed Nuruddin.